Connections with Kylan podcast. My name is Kylan, and this is where we talk about how we're connected to each other, connected to the things that we're passionate about, and the connections that we want to make in order to make the world a better place. I am really excited because I have a very, very special episode with, you know, my original Valentine, my original love, the strongest, prettiest, most beautiful, amazing woman that I know, my mother, Yvonne Goitia, is here with me today. <laughs> and okay. I'm super excited just to talk about, uh, you know, my, my original connection into the world. People ask a lot uh, about where my name came from. And I know that you and my father have different versions. So really? I wanted to give you an opportunity to share your explanation for where my okay. name came from. So uh, I used to hang out at Huntington Beach with my friends after school. <laughs> And um, these boys were playing football. One of them threw the ball close to me. And he said, one guy told the other one, hey, Ty, get the ball. And I said, oh, Ty as in Tyrone? And he said, no, Kai as in Kyland. And the name stuck with me since I was like 16 years old. And when I found out I was giving birth to a little boy, um, I said, what do you think of the name Kylan? And your dad said, Kylan, I like that. He took out a pen and a paper and kept trying different ways of how to write Kyland because he wanted to make sure it was properly, is it K-Y, K-L, is there an N-D at the end? So he figured it out and you're Kyland. What's yeah. his version? <laughs> <laughs> I'll save that for his episode, no. Um, no, I mean, it's not. <laughs> uh, no, well, people have asked, so there you go. There's the origins of my name. That actually does sound likely. I'm pretty sure my dad just said he made it up. But maybe um, he meant that you made up the spelling. And yeah, maybe, he did make up see, the spelling. maybe that's what happened. There's always, you know... Two story, three, three sides of every story. Exactly. Ah. Ah, where'd you hear that from? I guess from you, and I didn't know. <laughs> I heard it from your grandpa. <laughs> oh, okay. Reggie. Yeah, he said my dad said. Yeah, he, well, with couples, it's always his side, her side, and the right side. But it really is, in almost every situation, uh, interpretation. So that makes sense. Which is actually, I know we were talking about uh, in Will Smith's book, he has that, he has a discussion with, I don't know if you started yet, but he has a conversation with his mom. And his mom is basically trying to get him to go to college and he's trying to not go to college and pursue this music career that's popping off. And he says how like only now in his adulthood can he really see the differences that can exist in, in truth. Like we always think of truth and fact as like there's just one. And in so many cases there can be, but in certain situations he's like, it was, completely true to his mom that he has to go to college in order to, uh, she had to make him do that in order to do what's best for him and to be a good mom and to be a caring parent. And it was only true for him that he could not go to college and had to pursue the thing that he wanted to pursue in order to do what was best for him. And it was just like, he's like, neither one of them was like lying. Like it wasn't not, and one truth wasn't, you know, more valuable than the other truth. And so I thought that was, um, it just reminded me of like, oh yeah, that perspective. And just because we've talked a lot about the book, even though we yeah. haven't finished it yet. Yeah, I have. But uh, yeah. I did appreciate you gave me the hard copy of the book <laughs> as, as a gift, Christmas gift. I really appreciated it. Um, I'd already finished, obviously, the audio version. The audio but... version. <laughs> I heard a little bit of it. That's actually the best way to go. Um, but I did think a name was important for a person. So that's why I named your sister Scott Nee, because I knew she would be unique and different, which she is. I wanted you to have a unique name. Um, and, and so how many kids do you have? Well, it will give you your origin. So normally that's what I do with my guests. And I think that, you know, the familial tie is throwing me off. But normally we go into like your origins. Um, but we'll, we'll go into different orders still. So like, let's start with me and with you as a parent, because that's how I knew you first. <laughs> and uh, so yeah, so how many kids do you have? How old are they? Where are they? Four kids. The irony of this is I don't like children. I really don't. Um, the joke of our family, because, you know, nobody asked me to babysit. I was never around children. Um, and then I had four. But I like my kids. Like, I like you guys as, as children, as people. Um, and it, was, I, I, it worked out. Um, now that your sisters have kids, they look at me and wonder, how did you do four kids? We can't even get ours to go to sleep. Um, just running it, uh, just structure. Uh, remember when you grew up, there was two things you had to do, 
two things you have to do in the house. You guys had to play a sport and you had to do community service. If you didn't pick it, mommy picked it. So we were always just busy doing stuff for others and each other. So I don't know if you remember that, but. Yeah. Yeah, no, I do. I mean, it definitely still... stuck with us. So yeah, so I have, you know, the four kids and it's, it's, a, it's a balance. That's so interesting because like, I mean, she's saying that she doesn't like kids and I get <laughs> I why you say that, but it just feels like my whole childhood, not just were you good with all of us. Like you said, you did like your kids, which makes sense. But I feel like our house is a house where we always would bring all of our friends and all of my friends yeah. also liked being there and liked you and have good. Yeah. It's not like they I, all, okay. So, yeah. you know, you have friends that say, oh, I always wanted to be a school teacher because I just love children. I'm not that person. I'm not like, <laughs> I want to be around but she's kids not all the mean, time. I swear. No, I no. Not, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I was never. Because I feel like everyone person. liked being over at our house. And yeah, it was you. fun. And we did stuff. It was fun. <laughs> and, and then I knew where you guys were at. I knew yeah. you weren't at other people's houses, and You're I didn't know garage. what you were doing <laughs> in the garage. <laughs> um, but no. yeah, it's, okay. there's a lot going on all the time. And then, so where did you grow up? I grew up in Los Angeles County in a city called La Puente. Um, I'm still fond of La Puente, and I married a La Puente guy. <laughs> yeah. That, when did you guys get married? I should know this, but I don't. Oh, um, with... With the, uh, yep. your current husband, yeah. yeah. They're both La Puente guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. uh, your dad and my uh, husband. Because um, uh, first, okay, so first, you guys, uh, I guess, yeah. So we go, because... This would be my origins too, so I guess, yeah, you met my dad in high school or after high school? But you guys went to the same high school. We went to the same high school, and what I remember about him is that he was really smart, the smart guy on campus, um, kind of arrogant because he was such a smart guy that he was a smarty pants. That's when I first heard who he was, and then after high school, I met him. You guys got married, and then you had... My older sister, Scottney. Yeah, and you. We were married for seven years. Seven years. I know. Oh. Oh. Whoa. Whoa. You didn't know that. No, I didn't. Yeah. This is wild. <laughs> well, they call it the seven-year itch. It's kind of a thing. So um, people either make it or break it. Well, you made years. it just enough because I feel like you guys spoke like right after I was born. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right after. You were yeah. Born. <laughs> so. That was that was interesting. Crazy. Um, okay, and then you and Gil got married a couple years later. Yeah, and then you have two little sisters from that. I think about my parents have always been loving and supportive. And as I've grown up, I've gotten to meet so many friends who just didn't have that. And that's something that I've been, just feel so fortunate uh, to have. And it's not just like, you know, supportive and like, hey, if you need some place to come, you can come stay here. But it's just like supportive in the sense of, you know, always cheering, always having the signs out at all of our sporting events, even if we weren't doing good or weren't playing, like, and then always, um, you know, involved volunteering at the school to have an eye on us. And I think that, that's been interesting because it's just like, uh, you know, I, I, I feel so appreciative to have you as such a constant, uh, constant cheerleader. And whenever I, whenever I tell people about what I think about like my thoughts on love, I usually use you as an example. I was like, my mom's the ultimate example I know of, of someone who loves her kids unconditionally and supports them unconditionally. Thank you. I will. <laughs> Always will. Yeah. Yeah. Always it's, will. It's without question. And that's really something that you've taught me and have, have made me feel and have taught me. I guess have taught me by making me feel it. And I really appreciate it. <laughs> oh, good. Good. Yeah. I, I like to look at the smile all you guys made when would have when we'd show up at a graduation or a sports event or an award ceremony with our signs and our, your cheering section. I think you just grew up with that. And um, now that I have two grandkids, um, looking forward to doing the same thing with them too. Yeah, oh, I mean, well, we gotta talk about the grandkids. Uh, <laughs> my niece and nephew, because they're the cutest and best. Um, but I guess going into you supporting and raising, so like you were super, involved in all of i feel like always volunteering at the school and stuff too was that like what prompted that and how i, mean, uh, I know to some degree you were involved but oh yeah i'm at every school yeah um elementary middle school 
and high school. When parents say, oh, I can't volunteer at high school, yes, you can. You can find a way, you can be on a booster club, you can be on a parents committee. I did it all because I wanted to make sure, um, first of all, mostly, that nobody broke my kid's spirit. Everyone is born with a spirit, like a shining star inside of you, and all you need is just like a teacher or somebody, an adult, that's gonna crush that spirit. And that little kid goes home and they're sad and they're eating dinner and they're sad because they don't know how to tell their mom and dad when somebody hurt their feelings or they just don't get a chance to talk about it because they're watching TV or something. So we ate dinner, <laughs> we talked, and I was at school every day. And even when your sisters were in, in the stroller, I volunteered cutting things while you were in the classroom. Um, and working. <laughs> while she was working too. So. Off and on. But, but uh, yeah, so it was... I made sure that I volunteered enough because I truly believe the teacher told me once that um, we are advocates for children. They can't speak up for themselves. And I didn't quite understand what she meant by that until I started getting more involved with my kids. And you are. If you saw a teacher scolding a kid, especially when they took him outside and was like reprimanding them, I stood right there just to watch and make sure it didn't go any further further just unnecessary because that could be my kid I wanted to make sure that under my watch that people were treated the little kids were treated okay you know um they're little people well I mean I think that yeah that's definitely something your presence in our school uh in our lives is very strong and I think that you know obviously thank you um but <laughs> I especially want to say thank you because of how much extra support I guess you provided me to help me adapt and get through school because something that we've recently talked about is after the show uh, via recommendations from so many people that you talked to and then of course my older sister, her, your oldest, uh, Scott, me, she's her history, her background in school, her master's is around social work and behavioral psychology, especially for kids. Um, and somehow, uh, probably because of the abundance of the love and the can-do attitude that was present in our house, um, I, in just that, that resilience, like I you know, made it through school without finding out until just recently, uh, my own diagnosis uh, for autism. And I think that that diagnosis has helped me look back at uh, and this, at, if this is surprising, huh. it's because this is the first time that you're hearing about it because it's the first <laughs> time that I'm talking about it. <laughs> um, but I know that when we were talking about it, it was just like, oh, it made so much sense because of all the conversations that you were having with my teachers over time in terms of, and you brought like some emails, notes, and questions about like some of their concerns on things, but you just, uh, you know, I, I think... For me, it's the appreciation of that extra presence that you had there to support. Like it didn't even, it was just like, hey, this is, there's not any, there's not like, you didn't treat like, you never treat any of us as, you know, some sort of deficiency, but it was just like, hey, this is the things that are unique about my child. And and because we didn't know, so it just was unique. That was just what we thought. These are things that are unique about my child. And that extra support and that extra uh, advocacy from you for us to be uh you know for teachers to to seek to understand us and seek to teach us and seek to connect with us um clearly made a lot of difference and helped us all achieve and you know go on to additional education and degrees and all yeah. the things and well, it is interesting that you're 30 years old and was diagnosed, but it was also a aha moment for all of us, especially Scott and me, because that is her field. And she said, why didn't I see that? Because she was in it with you. She's your sister. She yeah. always saw you. I'm, I'm your mom. I see you. I've always known that you were, um, your scores in school were exceptional. They would send me, I showed you those notes and letters from Gate and Gifted Kids. When we would open your scores every year, uh, your stepdad and I would look at it and you were always at the top, like the top, you know, all numbers. And then we're like, well, of course, cause he's brilliant. Like he, you're really smart and teachers loved you, but they're only 
the only thing teachers would complain about was that you asked too many questions. I'm not a, um, I don't have a PhD or anything, but I did ask them, isn't that a teacher's dream come true? A student with a question? And then <laughs> the teacher was saying, but he has too many questions. And then in fourth or fifth grade, your, um, the vice principal said, don't let anybody break his spirit. He's smart. He has to have the question answered so he can proceed with his learning. Okay, so then I took that in as that's how you learn. And each of you has a, a have, you know, everybody has a different way of learning things. Some people panic when they take a test. Some people, you know, can't, you know, they, they need more time to process things and you just happen to have questions. It really came to light in high school when all six teachers walked into the conference room and said, introduced themselves, and they said, come and ask a lot of questions. So your dad had an agreement with them that you were going to ask only six questions per period, and they were willing to have you write the questions down after six I didn't questions. I remember this, so you just started And they were about willing right to meet with you after school to answer questions past six questions per, per class, which was reasonable. And um, then you decided to get on a bus. <laughs> Until right now. Yeah, then you got on a bus, a public bus, went to, a, a, what's that called, that um, school, Excelsior? Mm -hmm. What kind of school is that? That's a, just a charter school. A charter school. You got excited. You said, Mom, I th I'm at this school. You got to sign me out of school. And I was like, where, where are you? And you said, I got on a bus. I'm at this charter school. I need to be enrolled here because they thrived with kids like you. They want questions. They want kids that are... Well, they let us go at our own pace. That was it. They just gave us the packets of homework pretty much and were like, hey, come But you did get to go help. to do yeah. learn a lot of stuff yeah. and go to college concurrent with high school. So I think that fed you more. Yeah. And it worked out for you. But I was happy. But I didn't want, like, you know, I knew you were different. I didn't know it was like, you know, you had... Well, I think... I don't think it's a problem. It's just like a... A blessing like okay now we figured it out but you've got along all these years on your own you figured it out well that's what I would say though is a lot of it was figuring stuff out which has been interesting just even understanding like the spectrum and how you know unique it is because it's not like I always thought spectrum is like a line here to here and it's not it's more like if you're on the spectrum you're not somewhere on this line you're like uh, uh, basically the center of a circle and then the circle has eight or nine categories. And then you're basically a zero to a 10 on those categories. And everybody's gonna have, anyone on the spectrum has a unique combination of these categories. And so that I think, uh, I'm still learning about all of this. This has just been a new learning process for me, but, and obviously for you, but it's just like hearing something like that, it's so amazing how the, kind of problem solving uh, mentality that, that you had for us. It's like, hey, like, okay, well, there's a problem. We just figure out a solution between you and dad, especially like pushing like this question thing, which I completely forgot about <laughs> till right now. And now I remember that or whatever. And it's just so funny how we didn't even think, um, you know, to check anything. It just was like, hey, can we find a solution for this? Yes, okay. <laughs> um, and even when I was younger, because Scott, I remember you guys always just talk about how I didn't talk, and Scott right. didn't talk for me. Yes. Is that correct? <laughs> yeah. What was that like? Uh, well, I thought that was just normal. She's big sister. And when um, I would ask her, are you hungry? And then you would look at her, and she was like, yes, he wants a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And then you would just go along with it. Finally, my friend said, Scotty, don't answer for him. Let him talk. And I was like, do you want something to eat? And you just looked at her and I said, no, you tell me. And I didn't notice it because we were so, a lot of stuff that happens in your home, it just seems normal to you until somebody on the outside brings it to your attention. But um, yeah, and then we found out you had a speech problem, like I think in second or third grade, because you didn't really, you had, you had speech problem, you were in speech class for it. Yeah. You couldn't say T's or S's or something. Well, probably just from not talking. Though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you didn't need to. Um, but yeah, we just, yeah, you were just always a smart little kid and you thought it was kind of a cool thing to be in speech because the school made it a cool thing. Like, well, I feel like, I don't know if the school did or you did or whoever, but I think that's actually another thing that I credit uh, 
you with for sure is the type of and 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 my dad too because there's like a self-esteem element that you really built up in us where especially now at this point in my life uh as i meet so many other people from my season from other seasons who are doing reality tv thrust into this kind of public eye of attention where you have you know maybe tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people commenting positive and negative things and i've noticed just how much comparatively to to my peers in this industry uh it doesn't phase me because i'm just like <laughs> oh like just like in speech class or whatever like people <laughs> saying things it just was very early on I, I it was just that concept that you guys had for us it's like you know if somebody says that you're a purple elephant like why would you care if, do you remember the duck theory i used to tell you be like a duck and just let the water roll off yeah yeah and it but i mean that stuck with and then also now i know too the reason why i'm so good at it is because my brain also like has a lot of logic a lot of logic and a lot of things and but i started coping because of things that you did because i think uh when I think of my dad, like, and how he's a very introverted, quiet, very logical, literal person. Um, and you're this, all this emotional energy, uh, ext extroverted around people. And I had so much of my dad in me. And then I remember you would just bring me places, like thrusting <laughs> me to like, like you went to, if you went to, you know, the, the chamber of commerce meetings or, open houses or whatever, all these things you would just bring me to, exposing me to conversations, essentially conditioning me to be used to talking to people or to be <laughs> so, around. So it reminds me of, I was like, we get to go volunteer. And you guys are like, yippee. And we're going to pick up trash in the community. Okay, you get a free shirt and you get like free pizza or something. And you guys are like, yippee, you have to look at the positive stuff. But one time you went to do uh, something at the college, it was a, a Hispanic chamber. Of, it was a mixer with all the chambers community chambers of commerce and you were in there flipping burgers i think it was flipping burgers and you just gave me that look like i'm you're sweating you know cause, <laughs> and you're flipping burgers i was like yeah you're doing a good job and you get a free shirt and you're just like you gave me that look and then he started passing around flyers for mr felix diaz and he was he was running for city council or mayor or something and um you needed a letter a year later for recommendations for college and I said, remember, Mr. Diaz, you were sending out his flyers at this event and you contacted him. Remember me? I was the one sending out your flyers. Well, I need a letter for my you know, college application or something. And you said, aha, these connections. It was so I remember that because you said these people that I met. Yeah. And then you started like connecting those dots of um, social, uh, you know, networking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now you're good at really good at. Well, I mean. I don't know. <laughs> I, 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 I like to think so. I mean, I think, but a lot of that for sure was just being put out there so much, even when it was super uncomfortable, which now I understand how uncomfortable it was for me and why. And, uh, but still, I fortunately, fortunately got to see the value of it. Um, well, you know, a lot of times when people see this in kids, they just start giving them pills now, right? I mean, for certain things, there's de there's definitely different things. That was the same thing for the ADHD, though, too. I feel like it was uh, both of those things because I didn't even get that diagnosis until I was in college. Oh, yeah, I remember you telling um, me that. And because you know, we for which I'm a huge proponent of, uh, you know, at figuring out, you know, different all the different avenues as far as like, okay, what works best for this individual in coping and pushing past whatever the problem uh, or challenges might be. And that's, you know, for sure something that was instilled. But I think uh, also learning now in my adult life about certain medications and about certain like biological differences, you know, biochemistry in people's brains, it's like, hey, some stuff does need medicine, but it is, there's a value for sure in, uh, exploring different options and finding out what actually is necessary or not to help bring people to an even playing field um, or just being able to function in a more typical manner uh, in the healthy ways. Cause you know, it's not like you want to be like everyone else in every single regard. There's so much. Uh, Maybe there wasn't that much um, expertise in it because of all not. those teachers yeah. you've had 
Not one of them identified that other than he asked a lot of questions and um, the one teacher that thought you were annoying or sarcastic. <laughs> but um, that doesn't count. But as a teacher, I guess I would have expected them nowadays to identify things to help kids if they need medication, if they need a different kind of um, environments to learn and exceed and succeed the best they can uh, with the tools that they have the, the way they are the, their family life you know get a mom and dad that pushes them through <laughs> <laughs> no i mean obviously it helps um yeah i mean there's you know there's uh there can be so much to talk about in this regards but i also wanted to give you a chance to share what it's like to be a grandmother now that Oh. Has that been weird to use yes, the term? And you know, like, what, what, what do you what do you like the grandkids to call you? And how many grandkids do you have? <laughs> Where are they at? Oh, you know, I have to talk about this. Uh, two grandkids: a little boy named Carter, two nephew. He's two, um, and um, a little girl named Journey that lives in D.C. And I want to be addressed as Llama, Llama Mama, um, mostly because llamas are funny. They're the funniest little creatures, and I see a llama and it's just funny and I want them to see me and just laugh. It's funny. <laughs> um, but that, yeah, it's, I'm proud. I'm proud. I'm, I'm glad that I'm um, physically capable to play with them, entertain them, go visit them. Well, I feel like that's another thing that you instilled in all of us is being physically active. Like all, always. You had to uh, do a sport and you had to do community service. I remember you running marathons like most of my life. And I remember running the half marathon with you. <laughs> She's laughing because, so I came home from college. I'm like 19, so it's freshman year. And she said she was running a marathon. And she's ran like marathons my whole life and, and half marathons and all these things. And I was like, but you know, you're 19, you just feel invincible. And I was like, oh, I can run. So I was like, how long is this? It's like 13.1 miles. Yeah, it's a half marathon. Half marathon. And so I was like, okay. So the next day, I ran like two miles. Or three. I was like, yeah, I could do this six and a half more times. Like, it'll be no problem. Um, <laughs> and she'd just been training for months for this. And then so we start. And I was like, well, obviously, I'll just keep up the pace with this lady. Uh, <laughs> this lady here, you know, who's twice my age, I got it. And then... Around like, uh, after a mile, I was like, this is gonna be no problem. After two miles, I was like, yeah, this is fine. Um, you know, I'll probably start sweating soon, but it'll be fine. And then three miles, and I just remember not slowing down. Like, I was like, I'm not slowing down, but I'm definitely getting slower. And you started moving away from me. And I was like, I. I don't know how she's moving away from me. I don't feel like I'm slowing down. I'll and then you, you kept the moving line. around <laughs> further and further. And then at some point, I just remember like the, the medics were coming out to try and help me. And I was like, no, I'm getting... <laughs> And you then you're laughing about, about this. Said, seriously, and I'm like, like, seriously call the paramedics. And you're laid out and the MPs were... Or, EMT. Yeah, but then I got up and then I finished. Yeah, your sister right. was, not, Oh, you did after you finished. Yeah. They, and I, then they took pictures. Your sisters were taking pictures of you, like, because um, you're dehydrated or something. But you have to train. But so that has always start. inspired, I think, all of us to, to stay physically active and to want to be strong. And and, uh, and another thing that I'm just super appreciative. Um, but I want to, you know, I, want, uh, I don't want to, to go too long, but I want to ask you the main staple question I ask everyone as we wrap up for the show uh, because obviously we'll we'll do more episodes I just uh, really appreciate you coming out just so we can talk about some things at least I can make sure that especially for Valentine's Day I appreciate you and oh, yeah, uh, glad the flowers single. got delivered to you the house have anybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, <I'm your> love. <laughs> uh, but the question I ask for his is yeah. connections with Kylan as I say what is uh, the most important connection uh, that you've ever made in your life? And that could be connection with a person, that could be connection with a uh, passion, a thing, um, you know, anything that comes to mind. Okay. I don't know if you said there's no right or wrong answer, no. but I think to me, the connection with me, I like me. I like how I treat my family. I like how I connect with other people. 
I like if I say something and somebody has an aha, I'm going to try that moment. I like that. Is that weird? No, I just had I just had that yeah, moment. I was like, hey, <laughs> all right, I love that. That I was a like, yeah, you caught me, and I think and I appreciate that. I, I definitely that I just had that moment. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, well, in general, I I think. Oh gosh, I was like, didn't even talk about you watching me on the show. Um, but I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bookmark that. Um, I haven't got over that. You know that. What do you mean? It it. it I don't know if other people. Um, I know John. I know you and John. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we just we bonded over that because it was something that just kept happening all day long, every day, at night, in the mornings. What's going on? And to watch you on TV, you look amazing on TV, by the way. I mean, actually, the whole crew looked amazing. And maybe they She's did biased. something. I'll take it. Yeah. Oh, oh no, you guys look like you should be on TV. But um, just to see you on TV, and of course, it was very difficult. When, you know, when someone says something not so nice, or we're gonna get him out, or he's got to go, or something, and then the text messages between all of us, the text messages between your sisters, like, you know, taking their earrings off. Oh, this girl's going down. This guy's going down. You know, just the family connection was so much fun and the connection with your friends because you have a rooting team. Like, we're all cheering you on, but we're all in our different areas for the same cause. So to me, it kind of brought back memories of watching my kids, you know, at, at, at a sports event or an award. Except I was actually good at it. So that's... <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it was it was your cheering section but it it, it did wear you down it's I still have um, flashbacks hmm. like I'll wake up it's one in the morning and I was like oh I wonder what's going on in Big Brother I was like ah oh, it's over yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry but I appreciate the support <laughs> and you have the shirts too shirts were awesome With the sh and you, I remember you you said the shirt you could tell tell them about the shirt oh the shirts okay so I had somebody make, <laughs> make a shirt it has a picture of Kylan. And on the back, the girl customized it because the printer, she's, she's amazing. And she's, she put Kylan's mom on my shirt. And um, she made shirts for the babies, too, you know, the little ones. And we wore them everywhere. I, I kid you not, I wore that shirt like a uniform. And, and I wore it everywhere where people recognized me. I wore it at In-N-Out because In-N-Out Friday is my thing. And I met in California a whole family from Texas. Um, came in and they're like looking at me ordering and I heard them say big brother and I was like yeah are you guys fans and they said oh my god we love big brother we're from Texas and I was like oh let's take pictures and then I went to the store in Ventura and this lady said I love big brother and I go you're gonna love this and it said Kylan's mom and she says he's my favorite <laughs> and so I took a picture I was at Costco um, of course my husband's like come on you gotta put that shirt to rest you know he's like wash it and then I knew I was gonna wear it anywhere I walked out that door I put it on I put it on hiking I put it on um the airports because I was traveling to go see Scott and, and I went to Seattle to see Savannah your little sister and um there were some people at Pike's Pike's something some uh -huh. boardwalk thing and they're like yay big brother and I was like are you guys fans and they're like yeah and I was like, look. And they're like, no way. That's our favorite guy. Let's uh, take pictures. And, and I, started, <laughs> I started posting them, but it was just my, my, it was just exciting for me. Just everywhere I went, I just had to promote you and remind people. And I, you know me, like these kids were walking by my house and I was like, excuse me, you guys live down there? Did you guys watch Big Brother? <laughs> and my husband was just like, you talk that, to is, everyone. that is the the among the many things. I mean, you know, you can do that. You people, do that, huh? You've definitely yeah. made instilled like a bravery and a further sense around just talking to people, especially coming from you know me not liking to talk to people at all, but just being able to ask. And I think that that has helped for sure. Like my friends have always been like, "Hey, have Kyle and ask about like." you know, an upgrade or whatever it happens to be, uh, uh, or ask them if they'll let us do this. Like, they'll tell me to ask because doors. you showed us how to do that. And so many things. Um, and that's why I want to share because you're just so strong and powerful in so many ways. And you know, I never understood that. I didn't feel like I was a strong female until now that you guys are older and you're coming back with, this is why I did this because you've always been strong and saying we can do it. And I was like, yeah. 
okay. <laughs> I didn't read books uh, about yeah. being a parent. I mean, there's so many books nowadays, but I didn't really. Well, I think you did a it's great win- job. You have four, <laughs> four kids, two grandkids. Everyone's We're all still alive. And productive in yeah. of society. And yeah. I, yeah, I think. Yeah, Memo and I do that. We're like, as long as they're not liabilities to society and they're, they're treating people good, and then we just kind of do that to each other. We're good. <laughs> Well, it's well earned, and yeah, and just think, I just, yeah, I wanted to bring you just to chat and say thank you for everything that you've helped, you know, me to to believe about myself and then all of my siblings, and uh, yeah, the love, as like I said, you're you're the example <laughs> I go to for like to describe unconditional love, and I really appreciate it, and I love you, and thank you. You're welcome, Miho. I love you too. <laughs> And thank you all for watching. Cut. Um, <laughs> Sorry, guys. This connection with Kylan podcast. Thank you all for watching uh, this episode. That is very special and important Happy to Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. Clap, clap, clap.